The day begins after a dark night. As we shake away our sleepiness and freshen up, not too far away, worker ants are building a new nest, using their mighty jaws and the silk of their larvae. And while the farmer ants are making sure that there will be plenty of honeydew for everyone, the butcher ants are wasting no time slicing away as much as they can. And in the middle of nowhere, a warrior ant is making a stand. Welcome to the colony of weaver ants. A superior colony that never sleeps. The inhabitants of which are descendants of ancient ants that arose 140 to 168 million years ago. Seamless cooperation makes their colony the dominant presence in any environment that they compete in. In this colony, when there's a challenge that requires multiple workers, each worker can switch from whatever they are doing to the urgent task as need demands. That's how they get things done without any delay. The whole colony is integrated seamlessly by its communication system and division of labor based on caste, making it a super organism. An efficient network of trails connect their nest and valued resources, much like the highways and roads of our civilization. But instead of tarmac and concrete, they mark their trails with pheromones produced by their rectal gland an organ unique to ants. The frequented trails are then made durable by droplets of worker excrement. The droplets harden when dry, creating something like our tarmac that renders the trail the ability to withstand heavy rain or scorching sun for months. Weaver ants communicate and coordinate their actions primarily using chemical signals. When certain pheromones are detected by other colony members, they react with a particular response, which can be assembly, alarm, grooming, or recruitment. Besides scent, weaver ants also communicate through body language, sounds or vibrations, and by touch. Weaver ants are dedicated farmers. They farm aphids. They stroke the aphids with their antennae, stimulating them to release the honeydew. Pretty much like how we milk cows. They need the honeydew, sugar, for brood care. Although they can feed on the extra floral nectar of a plant, whenever there's an increase in aphid population, they shift to aphids. In return for the sugar they get from aphids, they protect the aphids from their predators. Weaver ant workers are polymorphic. There are major and minor workers. The minors have approximately half the length of the majors. The length of the majors are approximately 8 to 10 millimeters. Major workers perform many duties in the colony. They farm and forage. They defend, maintain, and expand the colony. Whereas minor workers stay in or close to the nests, where they care for the brood. Major workers that take the role of sentinels can be very aggressive, even ready to sacrifice themselves to defend the rest of the colony. Weaver ant nests are most common on the top of the trees, where most of their food sources accumulate, usually with an abundance of sunlight and photosynthesis. Once the site is decided, the worker ants line up, pulling adjacent living leaves together and holding on to them in a stunning feat of coordination. Other workers then rush to their existing nests and return carrying a few final stage larvae. Larvae at this stage have silk glands that produce strong, fine, and durable threads. The larvae need this silk to spin their cocoons that enable them to transform from caterpillar-like beings into adult ants. But through the long journey of evolution, weaver ants have discovered a better use for this silk. 
So, on arriving, the worker weaves by holding the larva, moving it back and forth over the edges of the leaves, all the while drumming on its head with her antennae. And eventually, the silken threads span the edges of the leaves. Back and forth, more drumming on the larva's head. This can keep going for a few hours to a day and may involve multiple workers until a comfortable hollow is formed. The worker then moves on to work on the furnishing of the internal wall with more silken threads and there a nest is ready. During the process of building a nest, they do not assess what needs to be done or follow a blueprint. They respond to local cues and accomplish tasks collectively. The resulting nest may have a weak and flimsy kind of appearance, but it shelters the ants from wind and rain, and the transpiration from its leaf walls create a natural built-in system with heating and ventilation. Whenever a new nest is ready, workers retrieve more larvae from existing nests to move into the new nest. A big colony of weaver ants could have nests spread across many trees. By having multiple nests instead of a vulnerable central home, weaver ants gain survival advantages by redundancy. The destruction of a single nest will never bring down the whole colony. Of course, with the exception of the death of the queen. After all, a colony can't survive without a queen. The queen lives deep in the heart of the colony. Call her queen, and indeed she is supreme, but she is nothing like a human queen. She doesn't make decisions, she is tended to and served to produce an abundance of offspring. There are many workers around her, and they are all her children. Like an imperial stamp, the queen makes herself known with a queen pheromone, which some workers spread to others. Even if the colony spans many trees, and even if they have no direct contact with her, all ants are aware that the queen is present in the nest so the omnipresence of her royal pheromones guarantees the unity of the colony. The queen started off as a female winged ant. I guess we can call it a princess. A virgin queen? A young queen? Okay, a young queen. Since becoming an adult, the young queen spends weeks in the nest, accumulating so much fat that her weight more than doubles. She is now ready for the nuptial flight. In this mating flight, she will mate with her suitor, a drone, a male ant. Male ants are very different from the females. They come from unfertilized eggs, and so they have only maternal genes. Being male in the matriarchal world of weaver ants is definitely not an enjoyable experience. They live very short lives due to their contribution being so limited that they have no use after mating. After they have fertilized a young queen, a few weeks after their birth, they have completed their only duty and die. As for the young queen, once fertilized, she sheds her own wings for which she has no further use, as she will never mate again. She keeps all the sperm acquired during her nuptial flight in an oval pouch located in her abdomen, known as a spermatheca. The spermatheca is the storage from which the queen will draw from, with up to millions of spermatozoa in a dormant state. For the rest of her life, she will draw upon them to fertilize her eggs and give birth to female offspring, worker ants whose fathers lived in the dim and distant past years ago. A queen also gives birth to unfertilized eggs, which eventually will grow up to be male ants. Weaver ants are so successful in their natural habitat that their main competition can only be other eusocial insects, such as other ants. And of course, humans. We destroy their habitats, and lately the trend is on in consuming their larvae as a delicacy. But all those are trends on a scale of the entire species. At least, for now, this colony is still and will continue thriving. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and give the video a thumbs up. Bye! Thank you.